Hey everybody, welcome to this gnarly lesson time where we're going to be talking about what is a table format. And in this video, we're going to talk about, again, what is a table format, but to kind of get there, we have to talk about what is a data lake, because a table format in modern times is really a construct that we think of when it comes to a data lake. And a data lake is essentially a, a large storage system. The idea is you have large amounts of structured and unstructured data. Okay, structured data being all your columns and rows and CSV files, parquet files, ORC files, and your unstructured data being like sensor data, audio files, video files, basically anything that doesn't quite fit into that whole column row paradigm. And the problem with that is that generally unstructured data cannot fit into your databases and your data warehouses. And oftentimes it can be really expensive to fit all your structured data into your databases and data warehouses, particularly for analytics. So oftentimes you have this sort of cheaper place to kind of dump all your data called the data lake, which could be sort of some sort of large distributed storage system like a Hadoop or a object storage system similar to like that of AWS S3, MinIO, uh, Azure ADLS, um, any of these kind of abstractions. Cool. But the issue becomes when you want to start running analytics on the data lake, because the data lake, again, it's just storage. So you might have like a thousand parquet files that make up a singular data set. And uh, well, the data lake doesn't know that. It just knows that these thousand files exist. It doesn't know that they're related to each other, that they are part of sort of a bigger thing. These are things that we take for granted when we work with tables in databases and data warehouses, where essentially when we add data to a database or data warehouse, it is figuring out how to store the data. It is figuring out how that storage relates to each other to create a table or, and has a catalog to track which tables are there. All this stuff is just stuff we just don't have to deal with. Um, but generally, when you're working within the database and data warehouse, you're kind of stuck within the paradigm of that database and that data warehouse and the tools it provides. And in today's world, we kind of wanted to use more and more variety of tools for different use cases because there's just so many use cases. So having that sort of flexibility to be able to use multiple tools is becoming important. So people are trying to figure out how to make the data lake more like a database and a data warehouse. And that's what brings us to this idea of a table format, because what we want are tables to be able to identify consistently defined data sets to sit there and say, I don't have to sit there and always say these thousand parquet files are my data set because I can make a mistake and only say, you know, these 999 files and forgot and forgot to pick one. So I can have inconsistency and things like that. I just don't want that. So with a table format, you come up with a consistent way where you can sit there and say, hey, these files are a table. The data in those files make up my data set and that is what I want to run analytics on. So that way everyone is using the same definition of the table and also enables you to do all sorts of things you would not be able to do without this abstraction. Things like being, again, like consistently being able to sit there and just refer to a data set by its name instead of by a list of files, um, which is great for things like SQL and imperative Python and things like that. So in the approach to figure this out, there were, there's an older way. And then the old way really is part of a different project called Apache Hive. And what Apache Hive was able, trying to figure out was how to make it easier to run analytics on the data lake, because in the early stages, when basically a data lake was a Hadoop cluster and you would use something called MapReduce to run analytics jobs on that Hadoop cluster, you would have to write these MapReduce jobs as lots of Java code that wasn't fun to write, okay? And that had a whole host of different sort of just complications. People didn't want that. You know, your typical analytics form is to write SQL. And that's what people want to do against their tables. So Hive tried to figure out successfully how to write SQL against your data lake. And then take that SQL that you write and translate that over into a MapReduce job or a test job or um, you know, using other different compute frameworks. So then what happens is that to figure that out, it has to kind of come up with a way to define a table because you can't really write SQL without a table, right? I need to have a way to express this data set. So the approach that it comes up with is to do it by folders. So sit there and say, hey, this folder is a data set. Okay, so table A and anything in the folder table A is table A. Anything in the folder table B 
and its subfolders are table B. The subfolders would be what's called the partition, basically chopping up that table into smaller blocks for faster querying. Um, and then to add on top of this, you had something called the Hive Metastore that would track, you know, these are the tables, and then these are like the sub sections of the table, the partitions, but it was still all based on tracking directories and tracking lists of directories. And this limited the ability to do really, you know, fine grained updates, to be able to do, uh, to have guarantees when you do those updates, to be able to do multiple transactions at the same time in a consistent way. There was just a lot of like imperfections with this that they didn't quite replicate the feel of a database or a data warehouse on the lake, and it wasn't super performant. Okay, especially as data sets got bigger and the need to get data fast got bigger, got more imperative, you know, it just didn't quite work. So more modern data formats like Apache Iceberg, Delta Lake, Apache Hoodie moved to a different approach where somewhere within their standards, they track the actual files that make up the table. Okay, and essentially the idea here is that you always know the exact files that make up the table and you have stats on those individual files and then you're able to roll up those stats at to like, you know, table level stats and you can use these statistics to better, to want to avoid having to do file operations, which speeds up queries, but also to ha have much more fine grained query plans to be able to optimize the way you do transactions to be able to do more, uh, to have better guarantees and consistency guarantees, asset guarantees. Um, being able to concurrency guarantees, uh, all sorts of different guarantees you couldn't have before because of this more fine-grained metadata approach, okay? And that's essentially what a table format is and how a table format works at a high level. We'll talk more specifically in, in the future, gnarly lesson times. I'll see you around.